you for the generous introduction. Before anything else, the book is of course available uh, for sale at a very special launch price of 650 pesos. Actually, if you check online sa Shopee Lazada, the price is double. So, uh, if you have, uh, this is your, your chance to get it at this uh, really low uh, launch price. No? Um, it's, a, it's a queer book. No? Queer in the sense of strange. No? It is uh, strange because uh, Dina Roma is really much more well known as a, as a poet and uh, so now we have uh, this artifact and uh, really uh, an important uh, book of local history about uh, uh, is it a city, a town in uh, Samar? It's a coastal town. It's a coastal town in, in Northern, Samar. Uh, Western Samar. Which of course uh, she also writes in her book as something that para na sideline na lang siya sa lahat ng mga kwento na tungkol sa sa summer. It's not you know a big uh, city like Tacloban, no? and uh, which of course uh, is, is um, like halos sa capital na yan, no? ng uh, summer. So uh, yeah, the, the first question really is uh, well, I got it from the review of uh, Tito Valiente, uh, no. Uh, Sabi niya, kailangan daw i-defend ng mga uh, poet uh, or ng creative writers ang pagsusulat ng local history. Uh, do you agree with that? Or did you feel that you had to defend uh, your work? Uh, okay. So, uh, maybe if you allow me, no, I, I'm going to uh, answer that question in a roundabout way. No? Uh, but, First of all, um, I would like to thank you know, uh, my, my dear friend uh, Dean uh, Joy Joanna Cruz you know, for, for the wonderful and uh, very warm and uh, generous welcome. Since yesterday, you know, um, we, we went to you know, somewhere to have a very leisurely, uh, leisurely lunch you know, and we started talking about the book and about the program uh, today, uh, since yesterday. So we've already sort of covered uh, several concerns no, uh, for, for this talk no, this afternoon. Um, first, uh, actually, parang we've, uh, we've had already several uh, book launch no, uh, and, and book talks uh, for, for this event. No? And always the, the question arises, no, how does a poet write local history? You know? um, but then actually, I never really thought you know, originally of writing a local history book about Pasay. You know? um, it just so happened that at that time that I really wanted to write something about Pasay, uh, NBDB put out a call for manuscript. You know? And it was uh, a writing grant uh, that would support the development of book proposals, uh, but under the local uh, culture and history no? uh, category. And the reason why I wanted to write about Pasay was, of course, um, yung Yolanda. No? And for those of you who would uh, you know, end up or uh, yung, yung read the book, no? I, I wrote there that um, it was very devastating for us no? in, in Manila um, when we started uh, you know, learning about what was happening in, in uh, Eastern Visayas. No? I come from Visayas, I was born there, but I never really stayed there for a long time. So I only learned stories about it uh, through my siblings, no, and I we moved to Manila when I was uh, four years old. So you'd imagine that I never really developed any solid memories of uh, of the place, no. Um, but uh, yung yung Yolanda, kasi it was very ang ang dating sa akin ng Yolanda was very psychical, eh, no, kasi I was in the hospital at that time for a second, no, episode of dengue. 
and to endure yung papalit-palit ng IV, no, yung IV bags, I started, you know, watching uh, TV. And it so happened that everything on TV at that time was about Yolanda, no, yung the coverage. So the, the images really the were, were starting to uh, not come out because there was a news blockade for, for a while. No, and then I was listening to people talk about the losses, the stories, really waking up like six or seven of your family members gone after several hours, you know, and then some really just flipped out, you know, they, they, they couldn't talk, they were just so traumatized by the whole thing. And what really got to me was that they were talking about these stories in Warai, you no, know? and Warai of course is my mother tongue. And then I just felt, I said, oh my God, this is so, um, I, I couldn't imagine myself being in their place. And there was this particular uh, coverage of, sino ba yung nakaaway ni Corina Sanchez? Si Ben Anderson ba yun from CNN? Oh, oh di ba nag-away sila, no? Na nagkaroon sila ng, because I think there were ano, criticisms of uh, yung kanyang husband. Uh, was not around actually during the yung Yolanda itself. No? So, si Ben Anderson offered uh, the use of his phone to this man who was crying, and then he even taught uh, the man how to use the phone. No? And when he turned it on, the first thing the man said was, you know, like, Nay, no? I am here, where are you? Are you alive? You know, and I said, oh my God, those really were the fundamental questions. Are you alive? Where are you? And it was really one of locating the people who are left behind. And that was really just, I said, oh my God, I never felt a visceral connection to my place. Um, like, never before. Kaya parang sabi ko ang ganun, basta ang dami lang non-realizations, and I said, what can I do no, to just know more about my place? Or somehow to just sort of, you know, just to tell the people na, we've heard your stories, no? We've heard your stories and I would like to know more about my hometown um, before maybe another disaster will damage it completely. No? So that was the running thread in my mind, no? And I said, ayoko naman ng poetry, panay na lang ang poetry ko. <laughs> there must be something else, di ba, that I can do. And then finally, yun nga, parang answered prayer when MBDP came out with a call for manuscript, no? Uh, and pwede bang mag-working rights? Ano, ano siya, out of the 69 submissions, Three were, I know, uh, three were chosen uh, for funding, and that was yung the book is one of the three. Just a quick uh, response to that. Uh, when you, uh, I think a lot of us uh, who were, of course, witness no, to, to Tokloban and uh, and Yolanda, no, the aftermath, uh, responded with with poetry. Uh, so, there are anthologies of uh, Yolanda uh, poetry, uh, but you said that you didn't want to write poetry anymore, but did you actually write poetry in response to the disaster? Yeah, oh, oh. Um, in fact, one ended up in Naming the Ruins. That was the very first one, the uh, very first poem that I wrote, and it's entitled The First Four referring to the first four hours when Yolanda um, massively hit uh, yung eastern Visayas, you know, uh, some places in the eastern eastern Visayas. And it was really just parang um, all in one sitting, parang I sort of wrote that home, you know, um, and in sequence, you know, one, two, three, four, and, um, and then I had another, yung kanina, yung uh, Basai 300 and that Basai 300 was based on a, in response to an article sent to me by a good friend who was really sympathizing with me you know? 
and she told me, Dins, uh, I read this, it's about Masai and how people um, went to the church, no yung colonial church, na St. Michael, na yung Gabriel, uh, which is on top of a hill, and it's been long used as a refuge no, for calamities. And uh, when I saw that, I said, oh my God, you know, like for the longest time, my mother would tell me, in what I what I did must get to or there's nothing there. So what would you do, you know, when you visit there? So and then I re I said I asked myself, so saan ng galing yung mga namatay, di ba? Saan ng galing yung 300 bodies or more if there is nothing there? So that was the kind of tension that I was working with, no, uh, or working on when I was trying to develop the concept for the book. So you wrote the poems, but at some point you felt they were not enough uh, to, to, um, to make sure that your town did not disappear. Is that, is that what I'm getting? Yeah, I think... Um, it, it was like the, the grant was like an external prompt, in a way, you know, a very pragmatic one so that I would be forced to develop ways of um, knowing my hometown more. You know? And something uh, like the knowledge of which you know, I could pass on to other people and probably in a way, also, if other people would like to write about place, maybe, no, just maybe, in my humble way, this can, you know, serve as a, as a model, no? The poems, um, they, they came in later. They, I wrote them much earlier because that's actually the way that I intuitively responded uh, intuitively responded to what happened, to the destruction that happened um, in Eastern Visayas, no? in uh, the coastal towns in Samar. But then I realized that to honor, it's almost like a love letter to my hometown. No? Um, so to honor that kind of desire, that kind of yearning, I went into research no, of archival materials, I thought of um, really reading up on Masai, uh, the way that a historian would, no? um, and also to say that Masai had not really gotten any attention at all, not even from myself, diba? not even from myself for the longest time, I would just use the name Masai as something that I would, uh, you know, write down in a legal paper, you know, uh, where are you born, you know, if you want to travel, if you want to apply for anything, you need to secure your birth certificate, the yung PSA certified uh, birth certificate, which would carry details of your origin, you know? and one of the most important thing there is where, where you born, you no, know? but at the same time, that was just a very functional, a functional relation to place. So I said, let me go beyond this functional relation. Let me see who am I in relation to Basai. What Basai has, you know, like stood for in, 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 in all the time that I have been writing, you know. And I realized that I have actually been writing about this place early on in my poetry, because I would write about my mother, I would write about my father, I would write about uh, yung, my family, my experiences, but always something of a sort of POV ko is home, point of view ko is home. And then I realized that it's probably, I have been carrying it all my life, maybe. And so with the local history and with you know, writing it in prose, in essay, diba? yesterday we were talking about essay, how the essay allows you or gives you that expanse, no? uh, that reflection, that room, uh, room for uh, no, yung rumination, meditation. No? And so with those essays, I was able to develop 
you know, these things uh, of where Masai stands you know, in, in my life. And also, I was trying to argue a point that Masai has been given very small you know, space in our history, you no know, Philippine history, but actually if we dig deep into historical records, Masai has been part of the Moro slave raids for the longest time. It had suffered a lot you know, because of the continuous pillaging of uh, the coastal towns in the 16th century. And then you have the Pulahanes, which is a big part of our um, uh, colonial, <coughs> colonial history. And then you have, of course, the Balangiga, and Basai has, uh, stands in the shadow of Balangiga. No, but Basai is actually, it, it, uh, it was the location for the American headquarters. So when Balangiga um, massacre happened, the surviving American uh, soldiers actually traveled on foot going back to Basai so that they could seek help. And then I tied it up with Yolanda, the historic Yolanda. Yeah. So that was the kind of you know, uh, thing, uh, narrative that I was working um, or figuring out, no? Parang how can I have all of these things in this book? Kaya siya inabot ng nine years, di ba? Kaya siya inabot ng eight, nine years, no? Ang dami kong gustong i-add back. Parang PhD defense. Parang i-add back. At una kong gustong itanong, kasi assignment dito sa Uh, essay class ko, oh. yung una nilang uh, major project dyan ay uh, ano, a writing place. No? Okay. A writing place. And uh, the assignment usually uh, is hometown. No? So, uh, what do you consider your hometown? And, and yung uh, a distinct characteristic of, of your hometown. Uh, so, uh, para sa'yo, uh, hometown mo yung Basay dahil doon ka pinanganak. Pero, Uh, when you were four years old, as you mentioned, you left, your family left, you moved to Paranaque, and you grew up in Paranaque, no? in a better living, <laughs> sa Bikutan. Uh, ako rin, lumaki din ako sa Paranaque, sa BF Homes. So, uh, in what way, <laughs> in what way uh, is Basay your, your hometown? And uh, how did writing this book uh, help you discover that? Uh, ano muna, na. Kasi, uh, before before coming to Mindanao, so I've had several book events. Uh, it was in the Visayas State University, and the one who organized the book talk uh, was Michael Michael Carlo Villa, um, who's into ano yung theory talaga. And then be, before I went to BSU, he gave me a long list uh, of questions. Pang, pang dissertation kasi may mga theory sabi ko can you please assign points <laughs> for the questions so that I can prepare accordingly no but those are very nice ano very nice uh, thoughtful questions no kasi for each of the for each of the talk or event that I would participate in I get to parang also reflect on my ano on my on my answers no um so I was born in Basay, and that's a fact of history, diba? That's a fact of my identity, you know? But uh, I, I grew up in, in uh, Bikutan, you know, in Manila, and that significantly took over my life, diba? And of course, our life in, in uh, Dalasal University, you know, in, in the university. And so for the longest time, I didn't consider anything, you no, know, any place, you no, know, as possibly my home other than the one that I would go to every day you know, um, and where I would rest, where I would spend uh, so much of my significant time with my family. You know? uh, but then when I started doing this book, I realized that um, there could actually be several places that can exist in you in your in your psyche uh, or in your you know person without you actually naming it no or, or identifying it as as such no 
So finally, when I get to unravel all of these threads no, in, my, in my imaginative life, I realize that maybe, you know, Basai was indeed one of those anchors. No? And uh, in my own research, in my own reading of human geography, um, I, I learned you know, that your relation to place uh, can have actually several strands. No? It can be a physical relation to place, it can be a spiritual relation to place, no? uh, it can be a psychical relation to, to place. Um, and that's maybe the reason why you know, people would like, to go, would like to go to sacred places or ruins, about sacred ruins, because if you uh, stay there you know, and just sort of just feel your, your, your surroundings, you know that it has been lived through you know, uh, for so many centuries, for so many decades, you know, uh, and it, it has its own energy. You know. So that was it for me. You know, na parang, uh, it wasn't a difficult actually yung discovery no that I said oh okay so it was actually Basai that had inhabited much of my imaginative uh -oh, yung realm no kasi parang yun ang pinagbubuhutan ng ng poetic uh, material ko no? and uh, of course it the the research on the ground going back to Basai you no know, several visits and really Basai is really just a small town, no? Talagang parang ano eh, mas malaki pa nga ata yung Quiapo. No, you can just walk around, no? O um, no, but the the population itself, no, uh, where you know, you have the municipio, uh, it's a small town, but in terms of ano talaga the municipality, no? Uh, Basai has 51 barangays under it, no? And it is considered a first-class, no, uh, first-class municipality. And then, uh, in fact, I asked. You know, finally, when I got to have a chance, you know, courtesy call with the mayor. After it came out, I gave them one, uh, no, a copy. And I said, for the, because I had this as a question in my mind: How come Basai uh, is given a first-class municipality yeah. uh -oh, classification? Given that you know, but there are other towns in Samar uh, or now cities, you know, that are much more progressive. And then she replied uh, by saying that it actually depends on the, you know, like you know, how many barangays and then the, the the place, you know, the in terms of dimension. So um, maybe you know, uh, I haven't really visited all of those 51 barangays because they they. They are sprawled out, no, but um, yeah, no, so you uh, And then reading about it uh, and the visiting the Sohoton Caves, you know, all of these natural uh, wonders, you know, I just realized that it has its own distinct beauty, you know, like any other place. And um, and of course, Banig, my God, the Banig, the mat weavers, you no, know, uh, which has really been the emblematic representation of Basai. You know? It's the this this magical Talagang women weavers. Because when I went there, they were just um, weaving quietly, no, under this huge uh, boulder, no, uh, in Saob uh, Saob Cave, and without any guide, no, nothing at all. And they were teaching the young uh, young girls, no. And they were just weaving, you know, they were just weaving and they were creating their own patterns. And, um, and I hope that that, you know, cultural legacy can be preserved and then properly, you know, like taught, you know. I learned that it's being taught as part of the TESDA program, yung balik weaving. Sila ba yung mga sa loob ng cave kailangan mag weave kasi yung matigas yung um, material that they're, they work with. Yeah, it has something to do also with the, ano, parang it's the weather. Kasi malamig, di ba, doon sa, ano, pag sa, sa cave. In fact, uh, I learned that Yolanda, uh, Yolanda affected 
the yung resources used for ano for weaving no parang naiba ata yung yung texture uh, i don't know i cannot explain it scientifically but that's that's what i ano, that's what i heard yeah, so the fact that you entitled the book weaving basay uh, suggests that it's uh, really a central metaphor uh, for you you and your own process could you expound more on, on how the uh, weaving of the mats in Basai and your writing process kind of come together? Yeah, I, I think uh, for anyone who is, you know, into writing would know uh, the, the process, not the slow process of, of writing. The slow and painful and agonizing process of, uh, of writing, especially if you're working on a thesis, diba, uh, Una natin bagitin ang dissertation, no? Kasi sometimes it can really take you decades and even the others never get to finish the dissertation, no? So it's really uh, a weaving, because um, you weave not only in your mind, but in the actual writing itself. So there's, it's not even a one-to-one -one process, eh? Your thoughts in your mind doesn't really come across, di ba? Uh, like on, on the page. Uh, once you struggle no, with the thoughts and um, with the narrative of it, you know, the way that you would like for a whole not to come out of the, uh, of the writing. No? So in that, in that essay, no, yung the, the metaphors of, of weaving, I tried looking back into my own childhood because no? I'm the youngest in a family of ten. No? And dami nun, di ba? Uh, and so, oftentimes, what what my mother would do, um, kasi alam naman niya na I couldn't really do much help, no, or help out uh, in the kitchen, because I have five uh, five sisters, older sisters, and they take care, no, uh, look after the you know, the kitchen and other chores in the house. So she would just ask me to go up, you know, just be quiet, do your thing, whatever it is. So I would end up just occupying the entire room, you no, know, reading, doing what I love the most, you know, and I would just do the write lines or copy certain you know, yung text from from the books of my older sisters or whatever. So that's how I actually maybe you no know, um started really loving reading, the silence, uh, and also writing, you know? and I compare that to how um, in other cultures of the world, weaving is often done by women in silence, you know? and often in the inner chambers of the, of the house. You know? So that was the kind of metaphor that I was uh, trying to draw from you know, in, that, in that essay, and until uh, just stretch it out a bit, stretch it, stretch it until I, you know, reached yung the mad weavers of uh, Yolanda. How actually weaving in the way, in the same way uh, of writing, no, it's giving us agency, no, because we can create patterns, we can create images, we can create no uh, an entire something out of out of nothing. Quite poetic, no? And um, however, no, the opposite is the local history. So, how were you able to weave uh, the lyricism of uh, your the, the way you approach writing is lyrical no? as a poet? So, how were you able to weave that uh, with the writing of of hard history? Yeah. I think that was one of the concerns, really, for the longest time that I was holding on to the manuscript. Because part of the, one of the stipulations of the grant is that I will be uh, submitting to NBDB uh, portions of the, of the manuscript. So like 25%, if I am done with 50%, 75 until I get the entire, you know, book done, no? and that's their way of making sure that I am delivering the things that I have promised in the book proposal. No? 
So the readers, uh, my readers were Karina Bolasco, uh, Jose Victor Torres, who is a professor and also a playwright, no, now based also at La Salle. And then, um, hala. there's also one from USD, a uh, historian. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I would write, no, I would exchange emails with them and I would say that, you know, one of the things my my stubborn block is really how much history will I put in, no, will I introduce into the book. Because I am not a historian, no. Um, and you know ang feeling ko talaga kaya parang I had doubts actually, no. Um, and then Karina told me that uh, you know Dina, if we really wanted a hardcore history book out of Pasay, then we would have chosen a historian to do the job. But we wanted a poet's voice for all of the uncertainty, for all of the doubts, and for all of the lyricism, the lyricism that you can add no to to the narratives. No, so that kind of uh, assured me. No, but of course. Part of my duty was really to read up on history, no? Na, because I cannot make up much of it. No? <laughs> uh, I introduced what I learned at home no? uh, and in interaction with my mother and with my uncle who were really the characters, no? who are really the characters in, the, in most of the essay. No? But um, in, in order to solidify or to substantiate those those exchanges with them, I had to really do research, you know? uh, and I consulted yung mga, uh, the well-respected historians in uh, of Samar, you know? kaya kasi Rolando Borinaga, I, I also yung consulted with him on, on this project. And um, so that's my, ano, parang that's my, how do I call it? That's my concession to history. No? So that that chapter on the historical vignettes, that's 10,000 words. So parang talagang scholarly article na siya. That's 10,000 words. And then I divided it into three vignettes. No? And I stayed with the vignettes. In, in a way, parang ano ko siya eh. Um, uh, ano ba ito? Parang safety, ano ko ang vignettes. Parang hindi ako hanapan ng ano, <laughs> di ba? <laughs> Nang yun yung talagang sprawling historical narrative. I say it's historical vignettes because there's supposed to be more stories behind it. No? Uh, and I think, okay siya the way I was able to, you know, start with something very personal and then move on to the larger framework of, you know, history. Uh, Ang hirap kasi ng history as we know it eh. Because as one of my assertions in in the book, no, even the history that we have come to know, no, can still be challenged. In the in the same way that uh, the younger Borinaga, George Borinaga, had made a rereading of the history of Polahanas in his own work. No? So uh, it, it was the that, that kind of energy that I was writing on, you no, know, when I was writing the, I know when I was writing the historical vignettes. Pero ang hirap kasi balik ko nang balik dun sa ano eh, sa material. Sabi ko ano nga bang date ito? Tama ba yung akin yung ano yung ganyan, yung even yung sumablay ka lang ng 1898, 1899, ang dami ng mga kaibang nangyayari doon, ano. But but uh, yeah, I think ano and. and I also made it a point not to have a very long, you know, just enough for you to be able to read it in one sitting. Uh -oh. Or even for the, you know. Uh, you did do archival research, di ba? So how, how did you select? Sa dami, sa dinami dami, or konti ba? Was that the problem na wala masyadong uh, archival uh, documentation about Masai? Or there were too many? No, the... Uh, at that time, I had a very good student assistant. She was the one going to National Library, to the archives, you know, and she did wonders, kasi meron siyang scanner na parang sa ano lang niya, yung portable scanner, and she was doing so many things, you know. 
And so I, I, I was so surprised with what she had gotten for me, no? Like, for instance, uh, there was a, uh, it's an archival material back in the 1940s, 1950s, and the teachers, the teachers were made to do a survey of the history of Basai. So they went through the, yung into the remote places, remote barangays, and they started interviewing uh, yung, uh, the, the residents there. But when you read it in the standards of today, it's far from a, ano, a local history. Para lang siyang anecdotal talaga, di ba? But of course, these things you use as, ano siya, as valid, di ba? As valid material. For your own, uh, no, uh, for your own, uh, for your own research, and there were uh, your dissertations saying that Basai had actually a very active role in the trading. No, you uh, know, there were diggings of the potteries, eh. and those, of course, in yeah, yung parang sa antro, di ba, na, when you have those artifacts, you can infer something out of it. No? so I was, I was citing all of these materials. No, not to as, you know, aggressively claim something, but just to say that here they are, they exist, no? And they can be taken further, no? A step ahead if you want, no? So, I, in, in my own writing, I was just so careful now. I want people to know that the materials are here, no? And for those who want to do further studies, then they can just. One of the questions that you ask yourself you know, when you were writing the book is how does a place uh, become home? Do you think you were able to answer that, uh, your own question, by writing this book? Yeah, I think, oh, and then, because um, for, <laughs> for the entire duration, no, uh, nine years, I mean, you can actually create a home out of those nine years, right? And the fact that you have gotten to know a place better, you've gotten to know more people along the way. People who have really been very generous um, in in uh, giving you assistance, you know, uh, with your own journey of discovery. In in a way, but yes, no. Uh, that's that's really just actually reclaiming your home. No? When I sat with the mayor uh, of Basai, uh, she was saying, uh, oh, so is this really about, you know, are you, are you about to come home? Is this a coming home? Uh, but I said, you know, um, I think home is really simply, na, you go back, you leave, you go back, you leave. Na, it's always a place that will welcome you. Yeah. So, you know, Oh nga. Siguro last na, yeah, oh nga. Kasi of course you want to have time for the open forum. Uh, my, my last question is, uh, you mentioned kanina that uh, every time you asked your mother uh, about Basai, she would say, there's nothing there. Uh, so, how do you feel about that now? Wala ba talagang anything there? O anong meron doon? Uh, maybe I can, uh, no, I can just, uh, you know, Side something, no? Yung, yung, there's this, an office kasi in Lasal, no? That does all of the, yung promotional activity, no? For our books, for our research projects, no? And they wrote me saying that they want to feature the book, no? Uh, for, a, for the DLSU Congress, Research Congress next month. And then they gave me a list of questions that I would answer, no? For, for their journal, yung uh, promotional journal. And one of the questions there is tying that, ano, yung parang, um, how would you reconcile now yung, uh, that, that sentence na yung Basai as the gift that it truly is and with your mother saying that there's nothing there, there's nothing there at all, no? Uh, on the part of my mother, I think it was really out of pragmatic concern, di ba? Na parang, eto kanya naman, magsusulat kanya naman, maghahanap kanya naman ng kwento, di ba? Parang wala ka namang ibang magawa sa buhay mo, di ba? Yung parang, why would you go there back to Basai when in fact, you know, parang 
Kaya gagraduate mo lang, maghanap ka na ng trabaho. <laughs> Yung gano'n, no? Uh, so, yeah. No? Parang gano'n din ang, ano, ang, ang feeling ko doon is that she had her own concerns. No? Um, and it was a concern, really a, a mother mother's wisdom i would say ikaw ano mo yun na parang you don't want your ano your child to be enamored with a place that may not give you as much opportunity as as possible no so i understood her in that way no and it would probably answer their own choice of moving to manila and leaving behind Samar, no. Uh, she and my, you know, she and my father, no. They made that decision, difficult decision, to bring the family over to Manila, no, and leave Samar behind, no. And at that time, because my father already was assigned to a different uh, province, no. So I, I just said, okay, so this is how she feels, but being maybe a a writer, no, I was saying it differently, no, na it's not to romanticize place as, as much as possible. I was always checking myself on that, no, possibility or inclination, di ba, na parang, uh, yeah, ano mo, fetishize mo, di ba? But uh, it was also to say that, I mean, those people na namatay, that's a lot, 300, no, all in one go. All in one go, in a matter of four hours, kasi di nagsa talaga yung parang one of my, uh, one of the survivors are interviewed, sabi niyang ganon, on the seawall that lines up the coastal town of Pasay, bago daw mag-landfall ang Yolanda, they were standing there. The people, the residents were standing there and they were looking at the behavior of the sea. nag yung water. And for several minutes, they were waiting for it to stop. And it wasn't stopping. So talagang nakikita na daw nila, naglalabasan na yung may mga ahas-ahas, yung mga ganyan. So parang very apocalyptic ang image, di ba? So it was, it was receding, it was receding. And the people there were already preparing, no, for a split of a second run to the to the church on top of the hill, no? So finally, when tumigil na yung pag they knew what was going to happen. Kasi, ah, ano yun eh, babalik yun eh, and few meters high yun. So talagang nagtakbuhan, nagtakbuhan sila, no? And so, uh, I said, wow, kung 300 yung namatay, parang, those are lives, no? And those are, you know, people connected to other people. It's a community. It's a community period. So I said, uh, there must be something else. Uh, could be a different set of reasons why my mother would discourage me to go there. No? And, and one, of course, is yung, um, summer is still, uh, until now, uh, a good part of summer is considered as a uh, poverty line. Siya, di ba? And you have uh, women ending up married early in life and having children. Na mga, it's not, it's not, ano, na magkaroon sila ng sampu, di ba? Sampu, ganyan. And, and so, imagine taking care of 10 kids, di ba? Talagang, ano, kabu, kabu. Ah, kasi yung nanay ko yung ginawa niya, no? And wala naman naging serial killer sa amin. Kaya parang, so it must have been a successful kind of, of parenting, no? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you know, so I was just trying to weigh certain periods, no? Like my mother's life, as my, yung parang compared to my own, di ba? And what are the choices that are available? Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dina, for your sharing and your talk about uh, the book. It's really, it's really something. So um, to to hold it, to read it, um, and to, uh, to to find ourselves you know, in in our own journeys and and studying our own. Uh, 
participation in, in, the, in the evolving histories of the places that we call home is, uh, is really a privilege. No? So, anyway, uh, there might uh, be some questions no, from uh, our audience. No? So, uh, segue tayo. Uh, can we call back Oliver Ladaga, our uh, MC? Okay lang. Yung parang, Pero pa uh, yeah, oo, parang ano lang, just to, before I turn it over, I, since you mentioned yung, yung the places, no, um, ang, I ended yung, the book, no, um, yung Poetic Resilience, Pasay, uh, Pasay Beyond Yolanda, no, because I want to go beyond yung the Yolanda and yung Poetic Resilience nga, you know, um, because I want us to question also ourselves the, the little that we have in contributing to the preservation of places. No? Uh, and we already are feeling it. It's different already. Uh, I heard from you know, on the news, no one of the Thai scientists that the earth as we know it, is going to be uninhabitable with the kind of heat index that we have experienced, no? And continue to experience, pero ngayon medyo nag iba na kasi umuulan na, no? But just imagine, like, for two months, we were getting, like, 50 degrees, 47 degrees, di ba? And that's already an alarming, ano, no? So, um, parang ano lang eh, where do we stand in this heat and in the flooding? Diba? in all of this freakish no uh, or freakish ano kasi talagang ano na extremes eh, no and how do we how do we ano uh, look at ourselves via vis the places that we occupy diba? so it can no longer be just uh, an extractive kind of thing diba? there has to be more caring there has to be more um, what affection, <laughs> love, diba? Uh, for 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 the things that give us uh, that give us life, no? So yung that essay, I ended up with the question of what kind of Pasay would we wake up to, diba? And it's not Pasay per se, but what kind of place do we wake up to, diba? In the years to come. That's all. Maraming salamat. Pag may question kayo, please. Not even about the book, just about writing or whatever. No. Second book reading, Kindra Lay Yun Ting. <laughs> <laughs>